My name is Terry McCann, Quality Management Consultant and owner of TCMC Quality Management Services. This is the first part of a two-part presentation. By way of a quick abstract, the first presentation looks at the results of a statistical analysis of data derived from long-term care homes in two local health integration network regions, or LINs, in Ontario, Canada. Specifically, a weighted average of a count of inspections by the Ontario Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care over the three-year period 2011 to 2013 is calculated for each nursing home in the two LINs. Averages for accredited homes are compared with those for homes which were not accredited at the time of the analysis in March 2014. The computed averages show accredited homes in a less favourable light than homes without accreditation. The second presentation advances some speculation as to possible explanations for this outcome. Before proceeding further, I would suggest that you pause this presentation and give a few moments consideration to your own assumptions around accreditation. Based on the premise, accreditation identifies organizations that meet a certain standard of quality, as described in the quotes from the websites of CARF and Accreditation Canada. Answer the two questions on the slide. What assumptions can you make about a long-term care home that is accredited and about one that is not accredited? If possible, your answers should be in practical, measurable terms. Pause this presentation now, do this exercise, and then resume once you are done. A friend of mine told me about frustrations he and his wife had experienced when his mother-in-law was living in a well-reputed and accredited long-term care home. There were repeated issues with plan of care, medication dosage and times, issues which returned again whenever changes were made to her medication. Since quality management is what I do, my curiosity was aroused. From the Ontario Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care website, I found that this home had many Ministry of Health inspections for complaints and critical incidents, most with multiple findings of non-compliance. I wondered whether this particular home was just an anomaly and decided to have a quick look at the publicly available inspection reports for a dozen or so other long-term care homes in the central Lynn region. Most were accredited and most had multiple inspection reports since 2010. A very few of the inspection reports noted that no findings of non-compliance were found by the inspector. A number of reports had multiple findings in one report. Eyeballing, I could not see a difference between accredited homes and those without accreditation. I became intrigued with the question of accreditation and wondered whether accreditation correlated with complaints and critical incidents. My background with medical devices which were accredited to international standards such as ISO 9001 among other standards led me to assume that a long-term care home with accreditation should be safer and of better quality than one without accreditation. It was with this underlying assumption that I read advertising such as on this slide, when you need health care, look for a provider accredited by Accreditation Canada, or As CARF International puts it, accreditation is a sign of quality. Consumers look for CARF accreditation in their choice, among other things, of home and community services. Nothing leapt out of the advertising to caution me about my assumptions. So back to my question about correlation. Considering that most inspections for the period 2011 to 2013 were as a result of complaints with the occurrence of critical incidents, or follow-up inspections as a result of non-compliance found in previous inspections, it seemed to me that a simple count of inspection reports would be one valid measure of quality and safety, even if no non-compliance was found 
seeing as there would have been a critical incident, or at least a complaint, that the ministry felt justified in following up with an inspection. There are extremely few resident quality inspections, RQIs, in the period 2011 to 2013. I had to presume there was no non-quality related bias on the part of ministry inspectors in deciding to inspect and that all homes were subject to the same rules in the ministry decision-making process. I shifted my focus to the Toronto Central Lynn region where I reviewed and counted by year all inspection reports for all 36 long-term care homes. For each home I calculated a weighted average which gave the most recent year, 2013, three times the weight, 2012 twice the weight, in 2011, a weighting of just one. An example of the effect of that is that a home with three reports in 2011, two in 2012, and just one in 2013, would have a weighted average of 1.67, whereas a home trending the opposite way, with one report in 2011, two in 2012, but three in 2013, would have a weighted average of 2.33 thus differentiating an improving home from a home with an adverse trend. There are two disclaimers and caveats that I need to provide before proceeding. Firstly, after I had conducted my investigation and statistical analysis in February-March 2014, the Ministry added inspection reports for December 2013 to their website. The effect is that my data for 2013 only reflects the first 11 and not all 12 months of the year. Secondly, I had no easy way of knowing whether any given home acquired first-time accreditation during the period of review. I assumed that a few homes that were not accredited in 2011 were accredited by 2013. The additional weighting factor that was applied to the year 2013 will hopefully have lessened the impact of such hybrid cases. What I found was a surprise for me. The weighted average for the 27 accredited long-term care homes in the Toronto Central Lynn region was 3.4 inspection reports per year. This seemed a lot more than the weighted average for the nine homes without accreditation, which was only 1.5. The difference appeared to be significant, but was it significant in statistical terms? At the risk of severely boring some of my audience, I owe it to others to say something about the statistical data analysis that I did with oversight from a former colleague who is a Six Sigma black belt. I myself am a Six Sigma Green Belt certified with ASQ. I wanted to use students' t-test to determine if the difference between the two averages was statistically significant. Students' t-test is predicated on each data set having a normal distribution. A normal distribution has the symmetrical shape of a bell curve as seen in the image on this slide. Unfortunately, the sample data were not normally distributed. I applied something called the Central Limit Theorem by randomly drawing repeated samples with replacement and computing the average until I had a normally distributed sample of size 250 for accredited homes and size 32 for non-accredited. For those who don't know, the Central Limit Theorem states that the distribution of repeated averages calculated from randomly chosen data tends to be normal, even when the data from which the averages are computed is from a non-normal distribution. The results were determined to be statistically significant with greater than 99% confidence. Since the null hypothesis could not be rejected, we did not have statistical evidence to say that accreditation is a predictor of fewer inspection reports for complaints and critical incidents, at least not in the Toronto Central Lynn region. This is what was found in Toronto Central. What was now needed was to demonstrate whether or not similar findings could be found elsewhere in Ontario. 
I repeated my analysis in the central Lynn region using the same methodology as before. Once again, I had to apply the central limit theorem to create normally distributed data sets for accredited and non-accredited long-term care homes, and then used students t-test to compare these groups in the central Lynn region. Although the difference in averages between the two groups was not quite as large as for Toronto Central, you can see from the juxtaposed graphs that the two profiles are still very similar. Interestingly, the weighted average for the 39 accredited homes in Central Lynn when rounded was exactly the same as for the Toronto Central Lynn region, namely 3.4 inspection reports per year. The weighted average for the seven homes without accreditation was 2.1, as opposed to 1.5 for Toronto Central. Again, as mentioned, the Central Limit Theorem and Students T-Test were used to establish statistical significance to the difference between the two averages for the Central Lynn region. For the sake of the statisticians in my audience, here is the output from the one-tailed t-tests that I did in Microsoft Excel. The t-critical values are those for a 99% confidence level, or alpha equals 0 0.01. If you want to have a longer look, please pause the presentation. With sample sizes of 1,000 each, the difference between the two averages was determined to be statistically significant with greater than 99% confidence. Again, the null hypothesis cannot be rejected. In the central Lynn region, we also cannot say that accreditation is a predictor of fewer inspection reports. Originally, I only hypothesized no difference between the accredited and non-accredited groups. But the message from the data is that in these two regions and on average, non-accredited homes actually have fewer inspection reports. Let me add here that there was one other variable that I considered when comparing these two groups, and that is home size in terms of number of residents or beds. Understood simply, a long-term care home with 200 residents has four times as many opportunities for non-compliance as a home with only 50 residents. If most of the accredited homes are larger than those not accredited, then perhaps that should be taken into account. With this in mind, I went back over my data and computed a new metric for each home called reports per 100 beds by dividing the weighted average by the number of registered beds for the home and then multiplying the result by 100. This did reduce the difference between the two averages slightly, but not by enough to make a significant difference to my conclusions. The null hypothesis still stands. As a quality management consultant and an accredited ISO 9001 auditor, I believe in the value of good standards, and so I have no axe to grind with accreditation or any of the accreditation bodies, such as CAR for Accreditation Canada. I think I was surprised by my conclusions because I had proceeded from certain assumptions that I now consider questionable. These will be dealt with in the next presentation. The analysis in this presentation underscores the need for further investigation and research to determine differentiating causal factors between top performing accredited organizations and accredited organizations that are performing well below par. Such research would be entirely congruent with the two quotations shown on this slide, where Wendy Nicklin, President and CEO of Accreditation Canada, cites the need for research and studies in the area of accreditation and outcomes. Before concluding, I need to acknowledge some of the limitations of my method, data and analysis, particularly in the use of inspection reports. Firstly, there are many other measures of quality than simply counting inspection reports. These include food and dining quality, overall ambiance, peace of mind and emotional, psychological factors. 
results of resident or family satisfaction surveys. In defense of using inspection reports, most of the inspections in the period of review were triggered by critical incidents or complaints to the ministry or other adverse communications, for example, from family committees or follow-ups on non-compliance found in previous such inspections. Secondly, it is acknowledged that a count of inspection reports lacks granularity. Any one inspection may result in only one finding or multiple findings of non-compliance or none. Adding this granularity to the study would be laborious, time-consuming and costly. This concludes the presentation of evidential data and statistical analysis. In the next presentation, we enter into the arena of speculation, opinion and conjecture in an attempt to make sense of what would seem to be counterintuitive observations. My contact information is on this slide. If you do not have the next presentation titled Long-Term Care Homes, Accredited and Non-Accredited Considering Scenarios, please contact me by phone or better email. Pause the presentation now to keep the information on the screen.